Well, good morning. Good morning, my story time friends. My name is Miss Wendy with the Rockbridge Regional Library in Lexington. I'm so glad you could be here today and let's get started. We always start our story time with a hello song and this hello song has sign language in it. So the first one is hello where you salute and then friends, you've got your two first fingers and those are your friends and they give each other a hug and then it's time to say hello. So we'll salute and then to say is point to your lips and then point out. Okay, let's do it twice. One, two, three. Hello friends. Hello friends. Hello friends. It's time to say hello again. Hello friends. Hello friends. Hello friends. It's time to say hello. Very good. Very good. Okay, so our summer reading program is coming to a close this week. And today is a very special day. In fact, today is the last day of our summer reading program. If you are around in Lexington today at four o'clock outside the library in the front, we're going to have a party. There's going to be a couple alpacas. Happy day is coming back for a, a, day, a, a return to the library and uh, there'll be snacks and there'll be art and there'll be music and there will be bubbles and lots of fun of course i mean how could you not have fun with that so please come join us if you have completed your reading log you're welcome to bring that and cash it in for your ice cream coupon or of course if you're still working on it you can bring it in another time so for our last story time of summer reading tales and tales we're going to read about Goats! Goats! The most exciting animal in the world! Just kidding. But they're really cool animals. So, and these three books are pretty funny. Pretty funny goats. So, so before we get started though, let's figure out what day of the week it is. So, here are our days. How many days of the week are there? Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's right, seven days in the week. And now what's the first day? Let's go through the days. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Excellent, those are our days of the week. Now, let's sing our days of the week song. That'll help us figure out what day it is today. Okay, here's how it goes. We're gonna hold up our seven fingers for the seven days. Okay, one, two, three. Every week has seven days. See how many you can say. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday. What is today? Okay, let's see if we can figure it out. It's the last day of summer reading. We are doing story time online. All right, is it Sunday? No. Is it Monday? No. Tuesday? No. Wednesday? Wednesday was yesterday. So that means today is Thursday. Hooray, that means the week is almost over and the weekend is almost here. Yes. But and before we go any further, I have a, a really serious question for you. And that is, are you ready for a story? Okay. So if you're ready for a story, hold on. Clap your hands. All right, here we go. If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, clap your hands. Okay, let's let's kick our feet. 
If you're ready for a story, kick your feet. Don't kick anybody though. If you're ready for a story, kick your feet. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, kick your feet. Oh, I played that wrong. Turns out that's too much coordination for me. <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's jump. If you're ready for a story, jump up and down. If you're ready for a story, jump up and down. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, jump up and down. Very good. Okay. Very important one. Last one. If you're ready for a story, sit real still. If you're ready for a story, sit real still. Can you freeze? If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, sit real still. How long can you hold it? Like a statue? Okay, that was way too long. All right, one more thing before we read our first book. Five deep breaths. That helps us to get ready to read. Okay, so I put my, to help me count my breaths, I put my first finger and my thumb together and deep breath in, deep breath out. Then I do my middle finger and thumb, deep breath in, deep breath out. And then I put my third or ring finger and thumb, deep breath in, deep breath out. And then my pinky finger and my thumb, deep breath in, deep breath out. And thumbs up because goats are cool. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Okay, are you ready? Let's read. Now, this first book is about a very sweet goat and a goat who is a good friend and a goat who does for others. So I pretty much love this goat. And this book is called Goat's Coat. And it's written by Tom Percival and illustrated by Christine Pym. And it's brought to us by Bloomsbury Books. Okay, there he is. Looks like he's reaching for something. Oh, he's getting ready. Got his nice little uh, sweater on. Let me tell you about the tale of Alfonso the goat, who was terribly proud of his lovely new coat. It had bright, shiny buttons all made out of glass and a collar, the color of freshly cut grass. People turned to admire as Alfonso walked by. What a marvelous coat, he heard someone sigh. Alfonso was happy. He pranced and he skipped. Then he heard a sad noise croaking out of a ditch. Deep down in the ditch was a family of frogs. They used to live there in a mossy old log. But the log wasn't there. It had rotted away and the frogs from the log had nowhere to stay. The frogs were distraught. Please help us, they cried. And Alfonso felt so sorry for them, so he tried. He unpicked some stitches upon his new coat and using the fabric, he helped make them a boat. The frogs were delighted. He just made their day. Oh, thank you, they croaked as they all sailed away. Alfonso knew, Alfonso's new coat didn't quite look so smart, but he felt a warm glow in the depths of his heart. He clipped happily along and came to a shed. The sound from within filled Alfonso with dread. 
What could possibly make such a sad sound as that? Alfonso peered in, and then he saw it. Ooh, what do you think it is? A cat! Uh-oh. The cat was trembling and terribly pale. It was clear to see that she had hurt her tail. Uh-oh, it got caught in a mouse trap. Alfonso got busy and cleaned up the cut. Then, using his coat, he bandaged it up. The cat was so glad, so grateful and happy, but Alfonso's coat was now looking quite ratty. He clip-clopped along through the crisp winter's day. He was whistling a song when a hen came his way. The hen was upset. She'd lost her chicks. Could he, this be something Alfonso could fix? Together, the hen and Alfonso looked around, but the hen's little chick just couldn't be found. Then, somewhere up high, a voice cried, Help! And there was the chick, stuck up in a tree. So Alfonso removed even more of his coat and tied it together to make a long rope. He gritted his teeth, then climbed up like a rocket. He came down again with the chick in his pocket. Alfonso's new coat was now looking a mess. Still, what's done is done. It was all for the best. So Alfonso walked on. There were more problems still, but he helped solve them all with his coat and his skill. Alfonso's new coat was now just a few threads, but he thought of the good deeds that he had done instead. The weather grew colder. Snow fell all around. Poor coatless Alfonso trudged back toward town. The blizzard grew worse. It got colder and colder. Alfonso took shelter behind a large boulder. Alfonso was freezing and night would soon fall. And so he curled up in a cold little ball. But then he heard voices ring out through the night. Someone was shining around a bright light. Who do you think it is? Who's got this bright light? Here came the frogs and the cat and the hen. He wasn't alone. He'd been found by his friends. Seeing them all made Alfonso feel better. And not only that, they had brought him a sweater. They made it themselves from the things they could find. A gift for Alfonso for being so kind. And for our dear goat, made best friends forever. He wore his new sweater, whatever the weather. The end. Isn't that nice? Let me tell you the tale of Alfonso the goat. Yes, he was very, very kind goat. He saw that others were more in need than him, and so he gave. He gave to them, and it really made his heart feel good. And that's what giving does. It does make your heart feel good. Okay, you know what else makes me feel good? singing songs, using egg shakers. So, see if you can find something shaky. You might have your own maraca. You might have your own egg shaker. You may have a box of macaroni and cheese, or just macaroni. You may have a box of rice. Anything that you can shake around to make some noise. And we are going to sing the song Egg Shakers Up. Because you know why? We haven't sung it in a long time and it's very fun. Okay, are we ready? So here's how it goes. First we'll go up and down and then round and round. I think you know it. We'll, we'll, you'll catch on. All right. One, two, three. Egg shakers up. Egg shakers down. Egg shakers dancing all around the town. We dance them on our shoulders, dance them on our heads, 
dance them on our knees and we tuck them into bed. Very good, very good. Okay, I always like to do this song in super slow motion. Super slow motion. So let's see how slow we can do it. Are you ready? Okay. One, two, three. Egg shakers up. Egg shakers down. Egg shakers dancing all around the town. We dance them on our shoulders. Dance them on our heads. We dance them on our knees and tuck them into bed. That was the slowest we've ever done. But that only means one thing. Now it's time to do it super fast. You ready? Okay, one, two, three. Egg shakers up, egg shakers down, egg shakers dancing all around the town. Dance them on our shoulders, dance them on our heads, dance them on our knees, and we tuck them into bed. Oh, I gotta sit down after that. <laughs> all right, I hope you enjoyed that egg shaker, shaker song. Let's see, let's read. Let's read another book about goats. <laughs> let's sing another book about goats. We could do that. That could happen. All right, now this is a great book to refresh and get ready for some counting. And it's funny, so can't beat that. So this book is called Let's Count Goats. And it's written by Mem Fox, and the pictures are by Jan Thomas. And this comes to us from Beach Lane Books. These goats look hungry. Okay, here we see a mountain goat frisking in the sun. And here we see a city goat going for a run. But can we count the seaside goats? I think there's only one. There he is, one. Here we see a drinking goat. And here a goat is eating. Hey, don't eat the table. But can we count the little goats lost and loudly bleating? One, two. Very good. Here we see an airport goat looking for her cases. But can we count the pilot goats with goggles on their faces? One, two, three. Very good. Here we see a show-off goat playing on the bars. Uh-oh, be careful. But can we count the rowdy goats careering round in cars? One, two, three, four. Hey, you can't drive like that. Here we see an over goat. And this one's going under. But can you count the crossing goats terrified by thunder? One, two, three, four, five. Very good. Here we see a sand pit goat playing with his toys. But can we count the trumpet goats making all the noise? One, two, three, four, five, six. Wait! <laughs> That's not where your trumpet goes. Here we see a summer goat with nothing left to mow. But can we count the winter goats huddled in the snow? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Watch out. Here we see a fireman goat climbing through the smoke. But can we count the rescued goats trying not to choke? One, two, three, four, what? Five, six, seven, eight. Here we see a soccer goat roaring at the ref. 
But can we count the cheering goats who must be going deaf? One, two, three, four, hey, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Here we see the story goats and all their shining eyes. Now, can you count their pricked up ears? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. You can? I'm not surprised. That's because we are good counters, aren't we? The end. Okay, stop eating the book. You may not eat the book, little goat. Very good. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that song. I mean, oh my goodness. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that book. And now for a song. <laughs> okay, so this time our song, we're going to need a scarf or a shirt or a dish towel or a sock or a napkin, anything that you can move around. And we are going to sing a song called Popcorn Poppers, Popcorn Kernels, excuse me. So, are we ready? Do we have our scarf or shirt? <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pretend our scarf is a popcorn kernel and it's gonna go into the popping pan and then it's gonna pop and we'll throw it up in the air. Okay, here we go. So as we do the first part, bundle it up into a ball in between your hands. Okay, one, two, three. Popcorn kernels, popcorn kernels. In a pot, in a pot. Shake them, shake them, shake them. Shake them, shake them, shake them till they pop till they pop. Okay, so that's how it goes. Let's do it again. Okay, one, two, three. Popcorn kernels, popcorn kernels. In a pot, in a pot. Shake them, shake them, shake them. Shake them, shake them, shake them till they pop, till they pop. Whoa, very good, very good. Okay, let's try to do it fast. All right, one, two, three. Popcorn kernels, popcorn kernels in a pot, in a pot. Shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them till they pop, till they pop. <laughs> that was fun. Okay, all right, my friends, we have one more book about goats. And this is a silly, a silly goat book. And not only is it about goats, it's also about a cow. A cow who figures out who he is. <clears throat> okay. This book is called Cowboy is Not a Cowboy. And there's the goat. And this book is written and illustrated, which means doing the pictures too, by Gregory Barrington. Okay, and it's published by Harper Books. Okay, let's find out what's going to happen in this book. Welcome to Humdrum Farm, where nothing ever happens. Okay. Oh, on Humdrum Farm, where nothing ever happens, chickens lay extraordinarily average eggs. Pigs roll in the mud only when necessary, never for fun. And goats eat every, a very boring food, except for one. Goat girl! While a humdrum goat would be satisfied eating a cardboard box, goat girl practiced the art of French cooking. I present a ratatouille with a caramelized onion souffle. Bon appetit. He's eating cardboard. When the humdrum goats wouldn't play a game of kick the can with goat girl, you're not supposed to eat it. 
She invented her own game. Roar! She's kicking the can, dressed up as a dinosaur. When the humdrum goats closed Lookout Rock over their fear of heights, Goat Girl found a new solution. Woohoo! There was nothing humdrum about Goat Girl. One humdrum day, she saw something new. Merle. Merle actually wasn't new. He was the oldest animal in Humdrum Farm. But he kept to himself. Every morning, every night, through every type of weather, he was very humdrum. He's reading the Encyclopedia of Dictionaries. That's extremely humdrum. Hello, cowboy! My name is Merle, and I am not a cowboy. Are you a cow? I am a bull. What is a bull? A bull is a cow who is a boy. See? You are a cowboy. Howdy, cowboy! Merle was not amused. He proceeded to explain exactly why he was not a cowboy. I am not adventurous. I am not brave. I might even be allergic to horses. Things Merle will do, sit in a field. Things Merle will not do, run, ride horses, look for adventure. Goat Girl told Merle he could be, the cow be a cowboy if he wanted to and proceeded to explain why with a persuasive 30-minute audiovisual presentation. It didn't work. Listen, Goat Girl, for the last time, I am not a cowboy. It was true. Merle was not a cowboy, but as a young bull, it was his dream. Yeehaw! Get up! A dream he had long forgotten. Uh oh. Ow, 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 ow. Oof, oof. Ow, ow. A dream he didn't want to remember. So there he is thinking about it. And it looks like it's not going so well in the whole cowboy category. <sighs> Another humdrum day. It would have stayed humdrum, a humdrum day, except something unusual was happening on the farm. The farmer had forgotten to close the chicken coop. That was very unhumdrum. The chickens forgot about laying extraordinarily average eggs and were overcome by the only thought a free-range chicken could have. Crossing the road. A dangerous road. Uh-oh. Goat Girl sprang into action to stop the chickens. Merle did nothing. Goat Girl tried to round them up with her horse. Merle did nothing. Goat Girl tried to distract them with her French cooking. Merle still did nothing. Until he'd had enough. It was time to do something. Hello, howdy old ladies. Sorry to interrupt your trailblazing adventures, but that road down yonder is closed. I need to ask y'all to return to the farm in an orderly fashion. Thank you kindly. Merle, you did it! You rounded up and saved the chickens from danger! You are a... Don't say it! Cowboy! The next day, everything was back to being ho-hum on Humdrum Farm. The chickens still laid extraordinarily average eggs. The pigs rolled in mud only when necessary, never for fun. And the goats continued a diet of boring and bland food. But if we're quiet and listen closely, the field of humdrum were the fields of humdrum were beating with a new sound. One goat girl and one cow boy, who was not a cowboy. We're both having a very unhumdrum good time. Yay! Things Merle will do. Sit in a field. Save chickens and play monster. Yay! Okay, Merle came out of the shell. I love it. The end.
No, it's not the end. New things for Merle to try. Solve a mystery. Bake a pie. Launch a rocket. Good luck. Good luck, Merle. Very good. I hope you guys enjoyed that book. And that brings us to the end of our story time. Now, don't forget, when you go out there, and before you have snacks or do anything, let's wash our hands. We'll do it once. Tops and bottoms. One, two, three. Tops and bottoms. Tops and bottoms. In between. In between. Rub them all together. Rub them all together. Now they're clean. Squeaky clean. Very good. Okay. Don't forget, if you're around today, drop by the library at four o'clock. We're having a party and it's going to be very fun. And thank you for being part of our summer reading Tales and Tales program. But until then, we'll see you later, alligator, in a wild crocodile. Give a hug, ladybug. Blow a kiss, jellyfish. See you soon, big baboon. Out the door, dinosaur. Take care, polar bear. Wave goodbye, butterfly. See you later, my friends. Bye, bye.